Hey everybody, my name's Ryan, and my wife and I just got done playing Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. And wasn't it amazing going through the story of Dragon Ball again, this time in an RPG fashion? But the game's kind of weird, and there's a bunch of different things in the game that can be kind of confusing. So, now that I've beaten the game, these are the things that I wish I knew when I played the game through for the first time. The community board is a really cool feature where as you become friends with different people around the Dragon Ball universe, you basically put them on a board that'll give them different bonuses throughout your adventure. The Z-Warrior community helps you with your fighting actually in the fights. The cooking community can help with the bonuses of your foods. The training community the training community helps with your defense and your leveling up and like experience gain. The development community can help with the different technologies that Bulma can make you. The community of the gods can help you with things that you get from battle like items or Z orbs. The adult community can help with your buying and selling and code of economy of the game. And the adventure community can bring up your HP key and your recovery item effects. Now there is sort of a perfect setup in each one of these communities that doesn't double up characters and I will show you the perfect setups now. In addition, you can use gifts on these characters to make them better at the community that they're currently in, which you need to make sure you do and max out. And if you use enough gifts, then they can become your friend and you can get more stuff from them. Next up is levels. The game presents itself as an RPG that it feels like you have to grind for. You don't. I am not very good at fighting games and I just did all of the side quests and the main quests and nothing else and any nothing was particularly difficult. So don't worry about it. Which brings me to my next point. Do the side quests. There are cool stories, they give you a little bit of leveling to make the main quest a bit easier, and maybe most importantly, it gives you people for the community board. There are some side quests that if you don't do as they pop up, some will just become undoable for the rest of the game, so you can miss out on actual parts of the game, which would be really unfortunate. Next up is the Dragon Balls. At different points of the game, and sometimes the main story stops you from collecting them, you have the option to collect the Dragon Balls, and it's very easy to do it. You just use the world map. It can take less than 10 minutes, and even that's being a little generous. And then make a wish. The wishes are for Z orbs, which you can use to unlock super attacks. We should never be short of because you have enough battles, but if you happen to be, maybe you'd want to make that wish. Next up in the late game, you can wish to bring a character back to life who was killed in the story. And when you do, they can be found in the world and will often give you a side quest, which is kind of neat. Next up, you can get money, which will give you zenny that you can spend in shops, or you can wish for rare items where you get ingredients and things to upgrade your car or other things that might be hard to find. The next thing is that food gives you a permanent boost. So before story missions, binge on the food you have. It gives a bunch of short-term boosts for your story mission fights, but it also gives you forever boosts as well. It's very easy to get ingredients, so it's not a waste, at least, e even if it's just for the forever boost you get from the food. And last and surely not least, I wanted to show how the trunks and cell timeline works. Because a lot of people get confused about how things happened. So first off, here are the two timelines. So this we'll call timeline T because the trunks timeline, and this we'll call timeline N because it's just our story's timeline. So first off, so first off, androids appear. Devastate Trunks' future, so Trunks goes back in time. While Trunks is in this timeline, he does a bunch of stuff, saves Goku, and then goes back to his own time. When he go back, goes back to his own time, he realizes 
that the things that he did in this timeline do not affect his own timeline because he created a separate universe when he went back in time. So technically, the timeline that we know and love is not a main timeline. It was created when Trunks went back in time, but that's a issue for another day. Trunks continues fighting the androids, and then when the androids arrive in our main timeline, Trunks comes back. He realizes they're much, much stronger, so he stays and helps and trains with his father and stays and helps and trains with his father and stays and helps and trains with his father. Then they beat Cell. Cool. Cell's dead. Yay. Everything's cool. He goes back to his main timeline. Okay, but Cell does not exist in this timeline because it took him many, 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 many more years to get out. Cell exists in this future timeline. So what Cell does is he beats up Trunks when he gets back to the future here and then goes way back. Way back to here. Bides his time until he's able to absorb the androids and then ends up getting killed here. Because Cell only went back in time because he was able to steal Trunks' time machine. So I hope that made sense. That's the basics of it. It's a little more complex, but there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope any of this was helpful. And if you did enjoy it, please check me out on other social medias, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Discord, on Twitch, on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.